You're listening to The Corbett Report. Hillary Rodham Clinton is a Wall Street-backed warmonger whose potential election as President of the United States this November poses an existential threat, not just to Americans, but to all of humanity. As First Lady, and then as Senator, she actively supported the U.S.'s illegal wars of aggression abroad. Today, our armed forces joined our NATO allies in airstrikes against Serbian forces responsible for the brutality in Kosovo. You know, I voted for the Iraqi resolution. The president understands this. Uh, He's fully aware that it's going to take a lot of patience and painstaking planning, uh, and we're going to support him. Including thousands of chemical weapons, large volumes of chemical and biological stocks, a number of missiles and warheads, a major lab equipped to produce anthrax. She not only admitted the U.S. role in creating al-Qaeda. When the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, we had this brilliant idea that we were going to come to Pakistan and create a force of Mujahideen, equip them with Stinger missiles and everything else to go after the Soviets inside Afghanistan. But then, despite this admission, as Secretary of State, her support of the war on Libya and the jihadis in Syria directly led to the rise of ISIS and the migrant crisis in Europe. The transition to democracy in Syria has begun, and it's time for Assad to get out of the way. President Assad is not indispensable, and we have absolutely nothing invested in him remaining in power. I think that uh, based on uh, definitions of war criminal and uh, crimes against humanity, there would be an argument to be made that uh, he would fit into that category. Libya was a different uh, kind of uh, calculation, and we didn't lose a single person. As we came, we saw, (laughs) he died. (laughs) Did it have anything to do? She was the one who announced the U.S.'s so-called Asia-Pacific pivot that has seen more U.S. military forces being placed in the Asia-Pacific as a direct military threat to China. And we look to the Asia-Pacific region, as we have for many decades, as an area where the United States is uniquely positioned to play a major role. The United States is not ceding the Pacific to anyone. And she has stated in no uncertain terms that Russia and Iran will be militarily targeted in a Clinton presidency, and that the nuclear option is, as always, on the table. And we will make sure the Iranians and the world understand that the United States will act decisively if necessary, including taking military action. There will have to be consequences for any violation by Iran, and that the nuclear option should not at all be taken off the table. That has been my position consistently. And Russia has to support the international community's efforts sincerely or be held to account that Russia and China will pay a price because they are holding up progress, blockading it, that is no longer tolerable. And unlike her many, many political statements of convenience that are merely a reflection of whatever is most politically acceptable at the moment. Do you think New York State should recognize gay marriage? No. No, okay. I support marriage for lesbian and gay couples. I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record and standing up and fighting for progressive values. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. We went through a thorough process to identify all of my work-related emails. The lawyers doing the sorting for Secretary Clinton in 2014 did not individually read the content of all of her emails. So that the emails were immediately captured and preserved. There was no archiving at all of her emails. We can be assured that these threats of potential nuclear world war by Clinton are not idle threats. 
a future Clinton president would be assured of a like mind in the new prime minister in the UK, who has stated in no uncertain terms that she is willing to launch a nuclear strike that would kill hundreds of thousands. Let, let me congratulate the Prime Minister on her, her new, new, new rule. But can we cut to the chase? Is she personally prepared to authorize a nuclear strike that could kill 100,000 innocent men, women and children? Yes. And, and I have to say to the Honourable Gentleman, the whole point of a deterrent is that our enemies need to know that we would be prepared to use it. Hillary Clinton is a neocon, a war hawk, a liar, an unindicted criminal, and a Wall Street puppet. Why is it, then, that those on the so-called progressive left, who would be warning against her if she had an R next to her name, are instead lecturing other leftists that it is now their duty to fall in line and help her get elected? If Clinton is nominated and it comes to a choice between Clinton and Trump, uh, in a swing state, a state where it's going to matter which way you vote, I would hold, I would vote against Trump. And by elementary arithmetic, that means you hold your nose and you vote Democrat. Uh, I don't think there's any other rational choice. Abstaining from vote, voting, uh, or say voting for, say, a, a candidate you prefer, a minority candidate, it just amounts to a vote for Donald Trump, which I think is a devastating prospect for reasons I've already mentioned. We in SDS refused to vote. We wouldn't support McCarthy. We wouldn't support Humphrey. Uh, our slogan was vote with your feet, vote in the street. Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm here to tell you that the slogan was right. The tactic was wrong. Uh, and uh, and uh, I think that the country, in retrospect, there would not have been a substantive change. There would have been a positive change uh, if Nixon had not been elected. But you learn from your mistakes. Hopefully, other generations learn from the mistakes of those who came before them. We're all here today because we're with her. And we're going to work our hearts out to make Hillary Clinton the next president of the United States. She will be the Democratic nominee for president. And I intend to do everything I can to make certain she will be the next president of the United States. The message here is as clear as it is predictable and disappointing. Once again, those with the influence to shape these events and ignite a genuine protest movement against Hillary's coronation at the Democratic National Convention are falling back into their roles as partisan ideologues, advocating for their candidate over the other side, taking the two-party system as a fait accompli and complicity with that system as the only way forward. But as Michelle Chosodovsky of GlobalResearch.ca points out, this election is fundamentally different. This time, the fate of the world hangs in the balance. In so many words, Hillary Clinton's foreign policy stance is, quote unquote, to blow up the planet. She has made statements to the effect that a first strike nuclear attack against Russia or Iran is on the table so that if she is in the White House, she could, in fact, unleash the unspoken, which is World War III. I think this is something we have to address, uh, both in terms of analysis, but in terms of political choice, so that anybody who wants to blow up the planet is not progressive. Uh, secondly, she has a criminal record, uh, not only in regards to the email scandal, but also in relation to the Clinton Foundation, which is involved in fraud, money laundering, put political cronyism, etc. It is amply documented. So that, in effect, the choice for the American people is to choose, is to elect a war, a war criminal. Too many people become attached to the personality of these political personas 
or fixated on the D or the R after their name. This clouds their judgment and stops them from seeing their policies and agenda for what they really are. As Diana Johnstone, author of Queen of Chaos, The Misadventures of Hillary Clinton, points out, Hillary is best understood not as a person, but as the instrument for the think tanks, Wall Street financiers, and other connected insiders who want to embroil the United States in more illegal wars and plunder the country and its people even further. I mean, Hillary to me is not even an interesting person. She is simply a shallow, ambitious woman who has decided to make herself um, the instrument of the Washington uh, think tank uh, persuasion uh, and, and is using that to, pro- to pose as a great uh, expert on, on, uh, uh, on world affairs uh, to be elected as president. She's, she, she, she simply is the embodiment of all that is terrible in American po- uh, foreign policy that has developed over the past decades. It is no hyperbole to say that the election of Hillary Clinton as president this November would be one of the greatest tragedies in the history of the United States, and perhaps the world. It is incumbent on people of all stripes, American and non-American, Republican and Democrat, progressive and libertarian, anarchists, and those who have never thought about politics a day in their life, to protest her nomination at the Democratic National Convention, work against her campaign for president, and avert the nuclear nightmare that is now coming into view. The Corbett Report is brought to you by The Corbett Report Subscriber. A weekly newsletter featuring James Corbett's International Forecaster Editorial, recommended reading and viewing, discounts on Corbett Report DVDs, and once a month, a subscriber-only video. Sign up today to start receiving your copy at corbettreport.com support.